how do the best runners in this country recover from a marathon? I'm going to share with you today some ideas of what works really effectively to help you return quickly and be ready for whatever you might have planned next. How do you feel the day after a marathon? There's a lot that went on in your body. The muscles are not in the same state that they were prior to the race. You might find that walking downstairs is not done in the way that you normally are used to. So a lot of challenges come and we wanna find out the best ways to quickly recover. So I got with some of our local runners here in our training group and got some thoughts together of what the most effective ways are to get that recovery going and feel good again. A few years ago, I was heading home from a marathon the day after the race, driving a three and a half hour drive to get home. And partway through, we stopped for a little drink or something and we're at this convenience store. And as I get out of my car, I see this man walking along very slowly and he turns to where he's get, getting to his car and there's a curb to step down. And he just stood there at the edge of that thing looking down uh, pondering how he was going to be able to get down those, I, I don't know what curbs are, four inches or five inches, whatever it might have been, and uh, just saw it as this huge challenge. So his legs were in a state that that was just not going to work for him. Uh, and his wife was with him, and I noticed her just making fun of him and laughing at him. <laughs> Eventually, she did help him down, and it looked like they got in the car okay and, and went off. But there's a lot that needs to happen to recover from the race. If you really fully raced it, you know, completing a marathon might be different than racing one, then there can be some really severe damage. So I got with our training group here and asked a few of them, what are your main tips for recovery from a marathon? So let's take a look at what some of those were. The past few weeks has had a lot of excitement for our training group. We've all gone through the marathon build. Most of us have completed our races now, whether it was in Twin Cities, Chicago, St. George, or New York. And one of our guys that at least does the long runs with us is heading out to Valencia, Adam Wood, so good luck to him. And we're in this recovery mode now. So I'm gonna share with you some of the tips that came from our local elite runners and others of what they like best for recovery from marathon. There was a common theme with a lot of the people that I asked about getting recovered. They all focused on getting good blood flow through the body. Now, we don't need to do anything extreme. We want very low intensity activity for this, which could be something like a light swim, cycling, just going on a walk. It doesn't have to even be running. So very low activity, get some blood flow. That's some good healing. One thing to include there is if you've been doing it consistently in the buildup would be getting into the weight room. My last race was on a Saturday and Tuesday, Thursday the next week. Braden was putting me through a very easy light workout with mostly isometrics just to get a little bit of blood flow going, a little bit of load on tendons to help with some of the healing there without promoting any further damage. A few years ago, Jared and I did our first uh, Boston Marathon together. Well, together started at the same time at least. And uh, after the race, things had kind of settled down. It became time for dinner. We we're looking at each other thinking, well, what do we want? And we're the type that, well, where would you like to go? No, what would you like kind of attitude? But we both realized together, what we need is a hamburger. So I thought back to my church mission in Australia, two years in Australia, and something I really enjoyed there was what they called the burger with the lot, which means you're gonna have not just the beef on there, but you're gonna have maybe ham, bacon, sausage, pineapple, beetroot, lettuce, tomato, mushrooms, onion rings, whatever they can put on it, they, they do it. And so we wandered around a little bit, found a couple places, and we didn't find the burger with the lot there in Boston, but we found a place that was just perfect for fitting our needs. Uh, so a hamburger and fries and shake. It might not be what my body needed most, but it's what my emotions needed. So even though that's breaking a bit of the rules of this perfect nutrition that you might think all elite runners do, that tends to not be the case on race day, at least after the race is done, and even the week or two after. So there are some good things we can do nutritionally, but we've also got to realize we went through weeks of being so conscious of what we were putting into our body and doing it just right. It's kind of nice to just relax and realize we're people that have other needs besides just those physical needs, and we really enjoyed that evening. 
as the week goes by, I do enjoy a lot of ice cream and other things just sound good. I, I do kind of whatever I want that week. There might be quicker ways to recover. And if I had an immediate race coming up a few weeks later, then I would be a bit more conscious of what I'm putting into my body that week after. But we got to enjoy life. And as long as we are getting the good nutrients in along with some enjoyment things, then I think we're going to be just fine. Since my main focus in what I study here at BYU is biomechanics, I thought it'd also be good to see what happens to running mechanics pre-race, right after the race, and a few days beyond. So I've got some data here that we recorded starting the Tuesday after the Saturday race, because I couldn't really run earlier than that, and felt very sore in my quads still especially and thought I was running very differently. In the upper body from the video, you can see things are a bit hesitant on how I'm hitting the ground. Some of the differences in movement and what I can see in the video and feel in my body show up in the data that we recorded. As you can see on day three especially, my steps per minute were a bit low for what's normal for me, and that gradually leveled off even on the fourth day. That shows up in how I'm applying force to the ground. The peak force that I feel in multiples of my body weight gradually crept up as the days of recovery went, which matched with a decrease in the ground contact time, how long my foot is spending on the ground. So I'm becoming more powerful as the days go by as I get more recovered. And that is also notable in the vertical oscillation. This is the up and down movement of center of mass of the body, which is really low on that third day after the race, where I'm trying to minimize the bounciness of my step. I don't want to hit the ground hard because it hurts so much, and my body just knows somehow how to make those adjustments. But then the fourth, fifth, and sixth days, I'm pretty close to normal again, where nine centimeters is about normal for me for this eight minute mile pace that I was doing this testing with. So the running mechanics do change. They're subtle, but there are some changes as we go through that recovery. But I would recommend the feelings in your body are probably a better indication of how the recovery is actually progressing rather than going in and getting running mechanics tests every day that you are going through the recovery. Depending on how your body responded to the training and the load of training that you've done prior, the tendons need some time to heal. And we usually don't get much feedback from the body of how our tendons are doing. There's a study from the past that found most people need up to two weeks, at least 10 days, to have their tendons return to their normal shape and size post-marathon. Now we brought the ultrasound machine down one year and found my Achilles tendon was quite a bit thinner at the end of the race, which is normal. As it gets warmed up and stretched, it's gonna be longer and a little thinner. And then it gradually gets back to normal over, in this one study, 10 to 14 days. We found it only took my Achilles one day to get back to normal. And I guess it was probably partly the amount of training I did and my body was just gonna be ready to recover quicker. But you should be careful in the return to activity that even if your muscles are feeling good, there may still be some time that your tendons need for healing. So avoiding any really intense activity in the at least the couple weeks after the race should be a, a good way to make sure your tendons are not going to be fighting back at you as the weeks go uh, beyond that race. I produced this guide that gives you an idea of what kind of activities to do as you go through the days post-marathon. I'll include a link to that in the description so you can pull it out for yourself and have a bit more time to look at it. But I hope this has been valuable. If you have some questions about what I've shared or some differences of what might be going on one person to another, then go ahead and put those in the comments and I'll respond to everything that I can.